Hello everybody, Wolfpack here and welcome to some Rise of Flight. It took a little while for this playthrough to get up in the air to say. And uh, I wanted to apologize for that. I've been feeling a little under the weather the past couple of weeks, honestly. It's been pretty rough. But now we are on the Western Front. So welcome to the Western Front. <clears throat> we'll go through all of the the beginnings to our career. We'll introduce our pilot and our squadron will be flying off, which we will see. First day in the front, take some time to study the personnel roster and familiarize yourself with how things work around here. When you are ready to get started next day, welcome to number 56 squadron. Happy hunting. So number 56 squadron is one of the more famous British flying squadrons of World War I and later World War II, as you can see right here. Um, it was um, created after a period in time called Bloody April where the Entente powers pretty much got their teeth kicked in in the air and it was pretty brutal so we'll be flying after that because I want to live at least a decent amount we'll be flying a new plane which you can kind of see in the back here it's an SE5 and uh, we'll introduce that in a little bit <clears throat> all right so the squadron was formed on June 8th 1916 at Gasport England and was posted to France in April 1917 so during the period as part of the Royal Flying Corps the squadron was equipped with then the brand new SE-5 fighter. Its arrival at the front with the latest fighter, combined with unusually high proportion of experienced pilots in its ranks, led at rumors amongst its German opponents that the squadron was specifically the anti erichthofen squadron, dedicated to the removal of the Red Baron. Although there were no truth to these rumors, the squadron did shoot it down and kill Richthofen's nearest 1917 rival, Lieutenant Warner Voss, in an epic dogfight. By the end of the war, 56 Squadron has scored 402 victories during the course of the war. 40 of the squadron's pilots were killed in action, 20 were wounded, and 31 were taken prisoner. Number 56 Squadron was home to many famous fighter aces, including Albert Ball. He was an original member of the squadron, but was later killed. And uh, we will we'll go through this a little bit later, but that's just a brief update of number 56 squadron. I'm sure if you're British, you know quite a bit about number 56 squadron, but uh, some people might not. So let's go ahead and head to the ports personnel room. Now, I believe with Rise of Flight, we actually won't uh, get the historical figures in our squadron, such as Albert Ball, but... Uh, I know Pat Wilson's campaign generator does that, so if you're into that kind of thing, uh, there is that. <clears throat> so this is our character, Jack Brown, pretty basic name, and uh, there's this picture. He was born in 1896, so he'll be 22, I think. Um, and uh, yeah, that's our pilot, and we're just a lowly sergeant, so uh, that is enough for the introduction for now. I want to keep it kind of short and simple so we can get in the air, uh, it's not to bore you and uh, bad weather cancels operations typical weather conditions are too poor to fly all right so all the missions for that day have been scrubbed and here we are on our normal screen that we all know and love so it looks like uh sunday and monday were canceled due to bad flying weather all right the date is july 17th 1917 at 0525 squadron number 56 uh, our location is Entre Blanche Airfield, uh, weather average clouds, base at 1500 meters, 19 degrees Celsius, barometer 748, and wind, there's zero wind, alright, and our squadron commander is Major Lewis Mills, alright, fresh ma mail, alright, see where we're going, so it looks like we are flying a protection patrol just before 1 o'clock is takeoff, and that is the only time we're taking off. It looks like we're going up with Henry Knight and Walter Hamilton. And Lewis Mills is our squadron leader. What rank is that? Oh my god. Um, let's go to our squadron room. Let's take a look. Um, I don't know how to... Major. He's a major. That's what that is. Alright. Okay, well cool. So we're just lonely. And it looks like everyone starts off with uh, zero flight time and such. Let's go to headquarters just to see. And as you can see, this northern portion of the front is uh, pretty hot at the moment. Uh, there's quite a few British and German airfields. And it looks like our patrol is going to be, it said protection patrol, I don't see that on the map. Um, oh, right here. So we're probably uh, escorting 
reconnaissance uh, planes or something like that. We'll get the full story shortly. So, and it looks like the main city is Lille here. And uh, nothing else. No other real big cities in this area um, or this immediate area. And let's see, what are the Germans flying over here? Albatross. Oh, we are going to be flying right over a Hun airfield. That's exciting. <laughs> a little nerve-wracking. Looks like Albatrosses, D5s. Okay. All right. Well, let's go ahead and go to missions and uh, next mission. Let's see how this line patrol goes. Hopefully everything goes all right for our lads. All right. So now it's our protection patrol, so I'll begin mission. I'll see you guys in the hangar. And here we are in the hangar where I will introduce you to our plane, the SC-5, maybe. Uh, I chose this skin. It's one of the unknown pilot skins, so I figured it'd be pretty fitting. So we are at number three. We have big number three, and that's our favorite number. And uh, the side of our plane is called Maybe, which is very fitting. <laughs> for one of my let's plays uh, maybe we'll make it back maybe we'll shoot down a plane maybe we'll die there's there's a lot of maybes there's a lot of unknowns and I think that's perfect and as you can see here our armament we have a, a overhead mounted Lewis gun here on this uh, this mount which swings up and down um, mostly to reload and you can kinda see in the cockpit we have a drum magazine there to reload it with we also have a Vickers machine gun that is mounted in the hull of the aircraft, uh, which is uh, helpful as well. So we have a decent amount of firepower, two machine guns, it's not too bad. Uh, this plane can also carry bombs, so it can also uh, be like a ground attack aircraft. And um, yeah, that's about it for the time being. It's a fairly nice looking plane, it's very boxy, uh, aerodynamics are <laughs> probably pretty bad but this plane is one hell of a diver so it is uh, definitely a boom and zoomer so I need to be sure to uh, work to my strengths with that type of thing all right let's go ahead and open up the plane settings here I want to keep our gun convergence at 125 fuel let's go ahead and bring down to uh, 85 uh, I hope that's good it depends it's, we're just taking a short trip across the front so I don't think it'll be too bad Actually, let's bump it up to 90 just in case I get lost. Field modifications. Uh, I can't have any of these because it's an expansion, which is ridiculous. It's really annoying, but uh, I won't get too much into that. And we will carry, not a Luger, uh, we'll carry a Webley. All right, okie doke. And uh, I think we are ready for action. So let's go ahead and head to the mission. And we're flying kind of a funky route. Especially on the return trip, it looks like a. Uh, I don't understand. Maybe oh, we're probably uh, escorting the the plane back. I wonder what we're escorting. I suppose we'll find out. But yeah, let's check our settings. Nope. Hopefully, uh, the set realism settings are set to something normal. They normally are. So, oh, and uh, one more thing about this. Uh, I'll talk about the plane a little bit on the runway. The problem is the AI likes to take off immediately. So let's go ahead and set our track IR and we'll go ahead and make sure all the way up have our radiator okay anyway let's look back here so something neat about this plane which most World War one aircraft did not have is it has a rear stabilizer which is adjustable which can uh, be pretty nice alright so let's go ahead and ignition and there we go we are hunky-dory we're in action baby all right, and let's kind of close our radiator for the time being. Now it looks like we're already rolling, just the three of us today. All right, let's kick back our rudder. Ailerons are good. All right. All right, let's get rolling. And those are probably the planes we are escorting right at 12 o'clock at the moment. And the plane, plane likes to jolt a little bit to the left, but we'll just counter with some rudder here. And we are rolling. Accelerate. Takeoff speed is at about 40, 50 miles per hour. Closer to 60, actually. But And there we go. Rotate. Easy enough. Just wants to come off the ground. Beautiful. All right. And let's go ahead and meet up with our squadron mates.
And I wonder what those are. Well, those are definitely the planes we're uh, flying to cover. I have the icons toggleable so I can see who I'm flying with uh, with our mission, just so I know their names and such. I don't use them to cheat. It's just uh, to know who they are. So Walter Hamilton is number two. And uh, it looks like I cannot get a good fix on uh, number one, but we'll find out eventually. And the plane is really wanting to kick to the left. So I have to compensate for that. Let's actually open our radiator a little bit. All right, plane is not liking me right now. All right, there we go, we'll level out a little bit. And there's a little town, I wonder what town that is. Can't really make it out on the mini map at the moment, which is unfortunate. But we'll just uh, plow forward over towards the lines. So like I said, uh, let's go ahead and go through all the gauges here. We have an air pressure gauge on the very left there, and right next to that is the radiator thermometer. Temperature is not too bad right now. Below that we have a compass, oil pressure gauge at the top, RPM obviously, and airspeed. And then right over there, kind of in an awkward location, is our height. And I lost my comrades already looking at my gauges. Oh, there they are. Hello. Looks like we're just circling around, gaining some altitude. It's good with me. Okay, and then we have our levers here. This one, which is moving now, is the mixture right there. So we need to lean that out just a tad bit since we are pretty high up in the air at the moment. This little wheel is the uh, stabilizer that's moving. Radiator. And then throttle. And obviously on our joystick is the machine guns. Uh, I think the left button in the middle is the, the Vickers. And the right one is the Lewis gun. Which hopefully we'll be able to test out in just a bit. Alright, so it looks like we're leveling out around this altitude see what height we're at almost 2,000 feet it seems and uh, yeah we are flying along nicely so I'm playing the catch-up game as per usual and we'll fly over to the front which should come in sight soon I guess it's probably just there is some elevation here so it's probably above this ridge Oh no, we are, the front is back of that way. We're going the wrong way, it would seem. All right, we'll loop around and uh, regain contact here. Um, all right, well, let's see. Let's see who our uh, leader is. I kind of forgot already. You know, fall in formation. This worked out actually rather perfectly. Oh, well, there's Walter. And Henry Knight is our squadron leader. So hopefully we all get back safe and sound. And I'm going to overshoot a little bit it seems. But uh, that's alright. Hello. Hello friends. And then the... Uh, they're probably like RE8s down there or something that we are escorting. And it's, since we're flying over an airfield, I suspect we are taking pictures. So, with all of that out of the way, I think we are moving towards the front now as I try to get in formation here. And uh, not lag behind. So, I will see you guys once we are over the western front. Alright, well, welcome to the front lines. There you can see no man's land, uh, the big you know brown smudge on the earth, and the planes we are escorting are a little below us. We're kind of there they are. They're right ahead of us. <clears throat> I established they are uh, DH4 twin seat aircraft, and we are just flying patterns around them. However, I think there might be Huns about, uh, especially this close over no man's land. We got to be careful. I'm sure German observation balloons have spotted five aircraft heading towards their airfield, so we need to be on the lookout. 
I'm not sure if they're actually taking pictures, however. I think they might be bombing this airfield that we are heading to. Uh, one of the reasons I say that, we're flying at a fairly low altitude. Uh, I'm not sure if they would be taking pictures at this altitude. It just seems a little low, to be honest. Uh, a lot of Archie fire is going to be attracted. So that's why I think this might be more of a hit-and-run type scenario. And you can see those are our our planes we are escorting pretty big buggers and I probably should climb up a little bit and stop uh, lollygagging this close to our uh, our big guys I'm sure anti-aircraft fire is going to start erupting any moment now as we uh, cross no man's land which is almost right below us still have a little while to go but yeah, there's no man's land. You can see all the trenches down there. Absolutely insane. And uh, let's keep sure, keep sharp. Make sure I'm not distracted too easily. Make sure there's no uh, enemy machines about. <clears throat> Always keep your head on a swivel. Now, one thing that is a little odd is this. This plane does not have a very good gun sight like we have this little middle circle where an atlas sight could go um, unfortunately I don't have that and then we have uh, this here this site so I might be using this a little more often here to uh, aim but we'll find out as we go all right over no man's land now you can see all the craters and such and artillery going off down below there and I feel like I just heard a flak burst, but I could be mistaken. <clears throat> I think I... Oh, yep, there we go. Hello. There is the Hun Archie. And we should be approaching the airfield momentarily. Looks like we're leaping back around. So I will follow the squadron leader with that maneuver. Now, the, the German artillery... And I've said this before, but the German artillery is the pitch black color, like that. Um, the Allied and the Entente powers have a, a lighter colored. It's more of a dark gray. And you can tell the difference. Uh, it's sometimes hard to tell if you're not really looking for it, but this is definitely uh, German artillery. That is uh, trying to shoot us down. I'm not too worried about it. Uh, the artillery seems fairly sporadic at the moment. The anti-aircraft, I should say. And what is that? Oh, it's a balloon? A draken? Maybe we'll shoot that down. Even though they are fairly dangerous to attack, too. Because they are, uh... Oh, that might be the airfield we're going for, actually. I don't see any machines on the ground scrambling, so that's a good sign. We need to stay at altitude, however. Don't dive. I wonder what these fellas are going to do. They're going to drop bombs. Or are they going to uh, take photos? We'll find out. Oh, that was a big shell that just went off over there in no man's land. Alright. So far, so good. This has gone without a hitch. But, uh, it's about to be go time here when these guys start to drop their bombs. Or click their cameras. Whichever one. But I think they're dropping bombs. Alright, good luck, boys. I lost my, uh... My two compatriots. Not sure where they ran off to. Probably looping back around or something. Well, I will stick with the, uh... The two-seaters. Oh, aircraft, anti-aircraft fire is getting a little thicker. Just to be expected. Of 
Okay, those are SE5s. That's my squadron. Yeah, it's definitely getting thicker. There's multiple bursts in the sky. Oh. The chances of getting hit by it are fairly slim if you keep maneuvering. The problem is if you get hit by it, uh, you're pretty much done for. <laughs> Especially if we get hit in our wings, we need to be very careful in our dives. Because this plane can dive. I might showcase it. If we, def if we get in a combat scenario, I guarantee you we're going to showcase it. But if not, I will just showcase it anyway. Uh, this can get to like a 160 mile per hour dive fairly easily uh, with little risk. You just got to be careful when pulling out of the dive so you don't shred your wings off. Which is the same for most aircraft, but this one a little more so since you can dive at such high speed. Still no enemy machines detected though. Oh, uh, we'll stick around for a little bit more. Are we already turning about? It looks like we are. I don't know what they did. Maybe they just dropped bombs. They weren't effective. Yikes, that was pretty close. Not a fan of that. All right, well, let's get the hell out of here. I'm kind of lagging behind. Let's open up the throttle. Pretty much just go straight towards my squad. All right, well, that went off without a sitch. Just a little Archie fire. Nothing too terrifying for our first fly out. Once we get over the lines again, I'll feel much safer, but I don't think anything is actually going to happen, so. I'd love to know what these guys' mission actually was. It doesn't tell me. Let's fly close to them. Let's take a look. Try not to ram them. That would be a very devastating end to our career. Hello. Nice looking planes. Very nice. I'm pretty sure uh, Taff in Exile was flying one of these in his last career. No, I don't think it was one of these. He was flying a two-seater. I think it was uh, an earlier variant. Uh, I'll look that up. I'll link that playthrough. It's fairly good. He creates very good content, but I'm sure most of you already know that that are watching this. All right. Well, I think we're okay. We're just going to go ahead and cross back over to Lions, and I will get back to you guys in uh, in a few moments. All right. So we have reached it to the two seaters airfield. And they are going to start beginning their landing runs now. And uh, I think we are okay to head home now. So we will go ahead and do that as they uh, go on with their landing pattern. And I lost my <laughs> I lost my flight once again. Um, our airfield is not far away from theirs. Let's see. It's just to the northwest. So shouldn't be too difficult to uh, to get there. Let's see. I guess they're not going to land immediately. They're probably going around to, uh, you know, land into the wind and such. Even though, uh, earlier, I was told there was no wind today. My my friends might be flying in that cloud. Who the hell knows? They, they like to do that a lot. So, alright. Thanks for the fun, guys. It's been a... It's a, been a jolly good ride. Yes. Yes. All right, so we'll go ahead and head on home as they land, and uh, we'll proceed to land. So, I'll see you guys momentarily.
So we are approaching the airfield, so I figured I would go ahead and show you guys that wonderful dive speed. So let's go ahead and pull up to pretty much a vertical climb here. Gain some altitude and then uh, nose down. Oh, our engine's choking. That's not good. I was a little too aggressive. Shouldn't have done it that fast, but anyway, looks look at the airspeed indicator. Going down pretty rapidly, 160 miles per hour or over, and we're still going. So let's just uh, lean up so that way we don't rip our wings off, but yeah, we're still maintaining that speed. This plane is fast as hell. And look, we're just blowing by these these French villages. And there's our airfield. Um, we're coming in a little too hot to land. What city are we right by? Um, let's see here. Estre Blanche. I think that is the town we are flying over right now. Let's go ahead and throttle down. Nice little French village. And there's the church right there at the top of the hill. Hello. Alright, so we're going to come in for a landing here. Let's check the windsock real fast just to be sure. Well, there is no wind for our landing. throttle up a little bit and it looks like there is actually zero wind so we should be good probably going to land pretty much the opposite direction I'm going now just to avoid all the trees and such actually hmm maybe not we'll see well I'll figure it out I just don't want to run into any buildings on accident or anything because this aircraft like most World War One aircraft, does not do not have uh, wheel brakes or anything like that, so <laughs> can't break my plane in case we bounce or anything like that. But I'm not too worried about it. Just cut down speed, and uh, let's get ready for Z landing. Well, hopefully, we land all right, and our first sortie would have been flawless. No mishaps, no crashing no battered wings you know all right all right here we go let's kill some airspeed try not to stall coming in a little hot it should be all right pitch up all right one little bounce two and there we go we are we're grounded. Perfect. Oh, <laughs> hello. Looks like uh, he was landing as well. Who is that? Henry. Henry Knight. That was our squadron leader. All right. So, let's take a look. Switch off the engine. And uh, maybe, maybe we won't. I'll just cut the mixture. That'll turn her off. There we go. Perfect. All right, so we will go ahead and uh, exit and uh, see how long we were up in the air and I'm, if it was successful. I think the mission was successful. Uh, I believe it did pop up mission success. I don't remember. Victory. Yep. All right, so we all landed and the total flight time was 44 minutes. All right, proceed. And uh, that went pretty well. Nice, nice, easy first mission. Um, all we really had to deal with was uh, enemy Archie fire which proved to be ineffective hopefully both of our other aircraft landed without a hitch none of them crashed uh, I'm sure we would have saw, seen that though you know we will see all right so uh, what Ellis and Walter have already shot down a plane so we're gonna have to try to keep up uh, that's gonna put it this guy was up for an hour and 20 minutes today all right well let's go to our other mission they should have one more mission an offensive patrol Let's see how they do. Make sure they do okay. No one gets killed. Even though we haven't gone too attached to our uh, squadron since we're brand new. All right, it looks like Jeffrey Moore was wounded, but at least he's not dead. Could be worse. All right, so thank you all for watching, and uh, I hope you tune in to the next episode of our Let's Play of number 56 squadron. And uh, maybe we'll shoot down an enemy fighter. Um, Alright, well, thank you all for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, all that crap, and I'll see you guys on the next one.